Welcome to the show. I'm Corinne. And I'm LaShawn. And together we're KNL Everyday CNA. We will be finishing up our part three of our busy October month series. And we will be talking about domestic violence today. As you can see, we have a special guest with us, our very own Lisa Sweet, one of the co-founders mm -hmm. of NACA and the host of CNA Heroes. Thank you for joining hey, us. Hey, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa, as you know, we will be talking about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And back in September of 2020, you did a story on one of our beloved NACA members, Melissa Chapman. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Very difficult time. Um, actually, uh, Gary and I, just uh, re-ran Melissa Chapman's CNA Heroes because October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and Melissa Chapman was a victim of domestic violence. A, a very sad story. Um, her abuser nearly killed her in the spring of uh, 2020, I believe it was, and um, had choked her and strangled her. She press chart she went to law enforcement and um, she eventually was coerced by her abuser into dropping the charges and the state picked him up so when they set the date for her abuser to stand trial for his charges they subpoenaed her to testify mm -hmm. against him and she didn't want to, as many victims of domestic mm -hmm. abuse don't. Uh, she didn't want to face him down in court. She didn't want to testify against him. Uh, she was set to testify in November of 2020, and I believe it was August 24th of 2020, she turned up missing, mm -hmm. was last seen with her abuser, and was yeah. later found um, nearby in a rural area and she had died of blunt force trauma to the head. A cinder block, I believed, was his weapon of choice. What a coward. Yes, yes, yes a big coward. Mm -hmm. Do you think, I have a quick question for you. Do you think that would have still took place if she was not subpoena or if the state wouldn't have picked it up? I mean, do you think the abuse would have continued or did it enhance it by You know, all that that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I think that she was in a relationship with a with an abusive person, and I think that that person would have been abusive regardless of what she had done, probably. Yes. And so, you know, that's kind of been a, a debatable point. It wasn't always that law enforcement um, picked up the charges and would subpoena the victim to testify. They, if the if the victim dropped the charges, sometimes that was the end of it. But then right. domestic violence awareness groups yeah. came forward yeah. and mm -hmm. said these women may not be strong enough to, to press him. charges mm -hmm. and the state should right. pick them up. And so that's kind of how that evolved. Mm -hmm. and, right. and now we're right in the middle of another story with the young woman, Gabby. So mm -hmm. it's, it's something that we need to bring awareness to. So th thank you for sharing her story. And uh, we're gonna be going over a few um, things that um, you may not know that was even considered domestic violence. So Lisa, feel free to jump in anytime. Mm -hmm. And when we were doing this research, we actually found that domestic violence could be hitting, slapping, shoving, kicking, throwing things at you, and any kind of restraining you against your will. Mm -hmm. And also making threats, sexual abuse, controlling, intimidation, a domineering, even stalking. Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, I'll never forget one time Lori and I were in another state, and this was before COVID, and we were doing a motivational presentation for the CNAs at a nursing home, and it ran, I don't know, anybody who's heard Lori speaks know that it's not unusual for her to run over her in time. <laughs> and so it ran a little bit over and one of the CNAs actually asked Lori and I to walk her out to her car because mm -hmm. her husband was waiting on her and had probably been waiting for 20 minutes on her and she feared he would be angry and mm -hmm. thought that yeah. he would take it better if we walked her out. Mm -hmm. So. And we were also shocked to see that every nine seconds, a woman in the U.S. is either beaten, 
are assaulted by a present or a ex-partner and before the mm -hmm. age of 18, 3.5 million first experience being stopped. Yeah. And the age of 18, that's so that's young. That's sad. And I think it's important to point out too that it's not just women who are victims of domestic oh, yeah. violence. Mm -hmm. Men can be victims of domestic violence as well although the numbers aren't as high as with women, mm -hmm. and I think probably men don't report it sometimes. I was just gonna say, do you think men are just like, we, you know, they feel like they don't, because they think that that's kind of like taking away their power. Right, they, right. So that's what I was gonna say. That's probably why, it's probably an equal amount, but they just don't want to. They fear ridicule who wants to, yeah. and, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Very sad. Well, we also found out on a typical day, the hotline for domestic violence received over 19,000 calls. Mm -hmm. And due to COVID-19 pandemic, the rate of domestic violence has or will be increased. That, I read that as well. And okay, Lisa, on the show, you, you talked about older women, why they stayed. Mm -hmm. So can you explain to us? You know, I think that um, sometimes when we think of domestic violence you had mentioned even you know 18 year olds mm -hmm. had experienced mm -hmm. stalking and domestic violence and i think that when we talk about domestic violence awareness we often think of women in their 20s and 30s but older women are victims of domestic violence as well women who have been married for 30, 40 mm -hmm. years, women in their, in their 50s, 60s, mm -hmm. and 70s can right. be victims of, of domestic violence. And you think about them and, you know, they have kids and grandkids. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them feel like they have, you know, dealt with it all mm -hmm. this time and they don't want to disrupt their family. Mm -hmm. Some of them probably fear that they won't be able to make it on their own, yeah. whether they have financial issues, health issues, mm -hmm. um, you know, they don't want their kids to have to pick a side. And so um, regardless of age, women and men have lots of reasons why they stay in that relationship. And it's really hard for us to question those reasons for staying. Yeah. I don't think it's really fair for us to judge their mm -hmm. reasons and think, well, why don't they just leave? Right. Melissa Chapman was trying to leave in the spring of 2020 when she was strangled. Actually, her eight-year-old child was abused in the mm -hmm. same situation um, when she was trying to leave. And so, um, just really hard to second guess why people stay. Um, just kind of need to encourage them to leave, but support them where they are, and like regardless. You said, it's, hard, it's, it's hard to leave because even leaving can still end up in a bad. I mean, regardless if you get away from them or not, they're gonna they'll find you, and yeah. it's just scary. I, I imagine right. most women feel it's like a failure to their marriage if they leave. Because I remember growing up and the things that was on TV, I'm a lot older than <laughs> LaShondra, <laughs> but it was like the um, the cleavers where yes. she always had her pearls and her high heels and oh, stuff yes. on. Yes. And a lot of women, it probably was a lot of abusive relationships back then, but if that's the area that you grew up in, it's like, no, I'm supposed to have my pearls on, dinner's supposed yes, to be on yeah. the mm -hmm. table, and that could be why mm -hmm. a lot of the other older women the choose The stereotypical, to stay. yes, yeah. yes. Which now, I mean, women are making more money than men, you know, we're out mm -hmm. there killing it. I mean, look what we're doing today <laughs> on our show. That's right, you know, that's right. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I mean, it makes a big difference. But we want you to know that um, you're not alone in this, so mm -hmm. never think that it's not gonna happen to you. I mean, my husband and I have gotten to arguments and everything, and an argument is okay. You're gonna have arguments and, and People disagree. you're not gonna, yeah, you're gonna disagree on everything. But when it crosses over that line of termination and, you know, not letting you go out of the house and stuff, mm -hmm. that's when it becomes a problem and you should be aware of that. Domestic violence is about control, mm -hmm. power, and manipulation. Mm -hmm. And that's what the perpetrators of domestic violence yeah. want to maintain is they want to main, maintain control mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. that spouse or that partner. And right. so, so if you experience domestic violence, um, please seek help. Never be afraid. Um, there's nothing to be afraid of. 
Um, a lot of your abusers will blame you that it's your fault and this is not your fault at all. That's a tactic to try mm -hmm. to get you to stay, mm -hmm. making, you, Make making you, feel you feel like it's your fault, yes. So um, we will be posting the National um, Domestic Violence Hotline um, behind us and down below us. So Melissa Chapman, CNA, um, you will never be forgotten. No, she won't. Lisa, thank you for being on the show with the Korean and I. And remember, there's help. Never feel alone. People care about you. That's right. Well, thank you for having me, and especially to discuss such an important yes, topic. Very important. I just love these thank ladies. You. We love, we we love, love you so you. much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, this is. Come back and see us next week right here on KNL Everyday CNA.